This morning, a police officer is found guilty on some charges after leaving a suspect in the back of a police car that was then hit by a train. Plus, a change in resources for those experiencing homelessness and how many people are displaced after a motel is now closing its doors. And we've talked a lot about Taylor Swift in Seattle. Her fans actually made an earthquake. <laughs> we'll tell you about that in just a bit. Well, that was just inevitable. We were waiting for that line to come across. Hey, we're going to get to all those stories in just a few minutes. But first, taking a live look out over Boulder as we start off your Saturday morning. And thank you for sharing a part of your weekend along with us, Anusha and Mark, back it's together. It's been just a beautiful couple of days. Yes. And now we're finally back. In summer summer breaks, there's summer vacations. I know, seriously. I like every other week, there's one of us that's at a wedding or on vacation with oh, It's very true. It's very true. So you had a well-deserved break. Break. Yes. You as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And let's head over to Greg as well because uh, gearing up for another hot day is what it sounds like. Yeah, another hot day with showers and storms, Anusha and Mark. On top of that, we have another air quality alert in effect, not only for us here along the Front Range, but also into the high country. Let's take a look at what we have going on right now. There's that air quality alert that we have in effect up until 4 o'clock along the urban corridor. That's that ozone, ozone action day that I have talked about before. Additionally, up in the high country, we have wildfire smoke that's causing air quality problems for Gunnison County, so any sensitive group should remain indoors. 65 degrees in Denver, 54 degrees in Lyman, middle to upper 50s right now as you're getting out towards the north and east in Greeley and pushing up towards Sterling as well. When it's all said and done, our high temperature for today, 93 degrees, increasing clouds this afternoon as we await those showers and storm chances. But for right now, we're dealing with nothing but clear skies, a nice start to our morning. If you're looking to get outside, I'd say the first half of the day is the time to do so because here come those clouds through the afternoon and even into the evening hours and some of these showers and storms could pack a punch especially towards the north and east you see these showers and storms just exploding onto the scene for sterling fort morgan morgan and pushing out towards akron as well heavy downpours gusty winds and large hail all in the mix for us there here's what we need to know moving forward hot again today high temperatures in the lower 90s for us with those isolated storm chances both today and tomorrow but we are cooling off for next Next week, details on that coming up in my full forecast. New overnight in Washington State, police are investigating a shooting that left five people injured in a South Seattle parking lot. Police were called to the scene around 9 p.m. last night. Two people are listed in critical condition this morning. Investigators believe there were at least two suspect, suspected shooters, but no suspect description has been released at this time. Right now, it's unclear what led to the shooting. We do have a few more details this morning as the search for two men Arvada police say shot three people outside a convenience store is now stretching into a second day. Witnesses say the two suspects were shoplifting from a 7-Eleven off Ralston and Wadsworth near Old Town Arvada just after one yesterday morning. Police believe that the people experiencing homelessness out front actually confronted them. It's not clear what happened next, but police say that there was some kind of altercation. The two suspects got in a car, stopped in front of the victims, and then fired seven times hitting three people. Police say all three should be okay. They are still looking for the two men and their car. An older model white four door sedan with no front license plate. They say the car does have a brown scrape on the driver's side door and front bumper damage. I want to tell you about a senior alert out this morning for a man named Howard Bruin. Police say Bruin was last seen at noon on Kendall Street in Arvada right near 80th Avenue and Lake Arbor. They think he might have gotten on a bus. They don't know where he is at this point. Police say he was wearing gray jeans, gray sweatpants, and no socks, but did have did not have shoes, I should say. Bruin is six feet tall, 140 pounds. They say he has some kind of cognitive impairment. If you have any information, you're asked to call our Vada police. We do have an update for you this morning as well regarding the trial against an officer who placed a woman in a police car before a freight train crashed into it. The officer has now been found guilty of two charges, both of them misdemeanors. Officer Jordan Stanky of Fort Lupton was found not not guilty on the felony charge. Last September, the woman in the police car, Yereni Rios, did survive the impact from that train, but she is still struggling with her injuries. The judge in Greeley found Officer Stanky guilty of reckless endangerment and reckless third-degree assault. The judge found Stanky not guilty of the felony charge of reckless attempts of manslaughter, saying she didn't knowingly intend to harm the victim. Rios' attorney says that she is pleased with the verdict. Absolutely, she respects how the judge the judge's thought process and, and she was online for the issuing of the verdict and the judge's record and she absolutely respected 
how the judge was very thoughtful about how he thought about the case. Justice to her certainly, certainly meant um, the officer being convicted of a criminal offense. With two misdemeanor convictions, Stanky will likely lose her ability to be a state certified police officer. She's going to be sentenced in September. Denver's new mayor, Mike Johnston, has some lofty goals to start his tenure as mayor. He wants to get 1,000 people experiencing homelessness off the street by the end of the year. The city announced it's now planning to buy a hotel to convert into permanent housing. City says it will convert the Best Western off Quebec and I-70 into apartments for people without a home. That hotel has 194 units and half of those already have kitchenettes. City Council still needs to give its approval for this to move forward. City hopes it'll be approved by mid-August and the leasing can start around September 1st. At the same time, though, a motel based shelter will be closing next month. The city is not renewing its lease for an emergency shelter at the Roadway Inn Motel on Federal Boulevard. A lot of anxiety and and complicating a lot of what folks are already living with in terms of their own mental wellness um, and, and coping skills. You know, it's it's a uh, it's tough. Offit, the gathering place, offered services at that shelter, which serves women, transgender, and non-binary people. The lease ends in August, so folks who are living there have just a few weeks left to find other housing. Some already have. Others have a housing voucher, but no apartment lined up yet, and about 30 people are still trying to make a plan, according to the nonprofit. The gathering place says some of these residents are asking the city to help them in the interim. The city has agreed to fund some bridge housing specifically for people who are engaged with services and have a voucher. So basically that have quote, sort of a pathway. There are going to be people for whom that's not the case, right? Who want housing, who are working on, on getting housing, but haven't yet lucked out to get a voucher. And we're really hoping the city agrees to fund bridge housing for them as well. People living in that shelter have until August 24th to move out. Denver's Department of Housing Stability says most people living there either have housing or some kind of option identified, and they are working with partners to help rehouse guests. Time is running out for Excel and its workers to strike a deal. If they don't, hundreds of power crews could go on strike. Workers want higher raises and end to mandatory on-call shifts and guarantees for workers at coal power plants to have slated for closure. Excel proposed a 13% wage increase. Workers say that's not enough to keep up with Colorado's cost of living. The union's contract ends tomorrow. Former President Donald Trump is attempting to reverse court rulings in two cases that involve him. He filed a notice yesterday appealing a ruling that prevented him from moving his New York criminal case involving hush money payments to federal court. And earlier this month, the judge denied his request to move the state case to federal court after finding the alleged criminal conduct was not related to his role as president. Trump has pleaded not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records to conceal the reimbursement of hush money payments made to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. He is set to go to trial in March of 2024.